Okay, we're going to have a look at um, this um, double entry question on the 2016 November test. So what we're going to look at is naming the book of first entry, then saying which account will be debited and which account will be credited. And remember that the way we're going to operate is the first rule, I suppose, the double entry concept, that for every transaction that we're, we must have a debit and a credit entry. So one account must be debited and some other account must be credited. We'll debit the receiving account and credit the giving account. Debit the receiver, credit the giver. And the easiest way to go about it, as I said to you in class, is to divide all your transactions into either credit transactions or cash transactions. And by cash there, we don't mean receiving cash. We just mean that it's not on credit. If it's a credit transaction, there'll usually be a person named. And it should be easily it should be easy to work out, will we debit or credit that person? On the other hand, if it's not a credit transaction, we're probably receiving or paying money. And it, again, should be easy enough to work out, will we debit or credit our bank account? So, okay, let's have a go here. Uh, first transaction, bought goods on credit from Harrington Limited. Because we've bought goods, we'll use the Purchases Daybook, one of our seven books of first entry. So, Purchases Daybook, or just the Purchases Book. And it's on credit, so we have a person, Harrington, and we say, has Harrington received or given when we bought goods from them? So, when we buy goods from them, they've given, so we'll credit Harrington. And we'll debit our purchases account on the basis that almost as if our purchases account has received goods. Or simply that seeing as seeing as we've debited, uh, seeing as we've credited Harrington, we have to go and debit the other account involved. Receiving an invoice from someone is the same as saying we purchased goods from them. So that's also purchases day book. And because Brendan Limited is giving... We're going to credit them, credit the giver, and we will debit the purchases account again. Now in number three, however, we're buying stuff on credit, but this time it's a new office chair. So that can't be purchases because it's not stock for resale. So if we can't use the purchases day book, and we're not paying for it straight away, so we can't use the cash book, we're going to use the general journal. That book of first entry that we use when nothing else will do. We've bought the goods on credit. So who's the person involved? k &S Limited. Are they receiving or giving? They're giving. So we will credit them. So I'll credit k &S Limited. And I will debit not our purchases account, but our office furniture. Why? Because it's receiving the furniture, if you want to look at it that way. Or we have to debit the office furniture account because we've got an credited KNS Limited. Paying for the delivery of the office chair adds to the cost of the chair. Now, because we're paying money, it's the cash book we're going to use. And we debit office furniture again. Because paying for the delivery of an asset adds to the cost of the asset. We don't treat it as a day-to-day -day, uh, revenue expense. Instead, we treat it as capital expenditure. We'll go on about that later in a different class. Uh, we pay the cheque, so we're going to credit our bank account. Or we would credit our bank account any time, in fact, that we pay money out of that account. We bought goods from Kennedy Limited, and we paid by cheque. So, although Kennedy is mentioned, we, it's a cash purchase. We have paid money. So we're going to use our cash book as our book of first entry. And we will start with our bank account and ask ourselves, have we received or paid? And we've paid money out of our bank account. Our bank account is given. Therefore, we will credit the bank account for the same reason as we credited it up in number four when we paid a cheque for delivery. We credited our bank. No, we've paid for buying goods. So we credit our bank and we debit purchases account. Notice we've debited the purchases account again as we did up in numbers one and two when it was a credit purchase. 
We received a credit note for, from Harrington. So that must be, or probably is, because we've returned some of those goods we bought back in transaction number one. So it's the purchases returns book. And we've sent goods back to Harrington. So Harrington is receiving. We would debit Harrington Limited. Because they're receiving. We've sent the goods back to them. And we will credit our purchases returns. We'll credit our purchases returns account. We're moving on now to some sales. We sold goods on credit. So it's the sales day book. We sold the goods on credit to O'Connell Limited, so we should go and debit O'Connell Limited because they're receiving. And we will credit our sales account as if it were giving out the goods. Or we have to credit the sales account anyway to finish the double entry. We've debited O'Connell. This time we've sold goods to Heffernan, but watch out, it's a cash sale. So we're not going to use the sales day book, we're using the cash book because we spent money. And that money was lodged, so it's gone into the bank account. So our bank account is receiving, so we debit it. And as always with sales, we credit the sales account. So you can see in 7, the double entry for a credit sale is to debit the debtor and credit the sales account. O'Connell Limited being the debtor. And in 8, we've credited our sales account and debited our bank account because our bank account received the money. Now in 9 we're selling stuff again but it's office chairs on credit to Dunphy. So maybe we got rid of some uh, second hand office chairs. So it's the general journal not the sales day book. We've sold those to Dunphy and Sons. So debit them because they're receiving. And instead of crediting our sales account we would credit office furniture. On the basis that, if you like, the chairs are leaving the office furniture account. The office furniture account is giving the chairs credit the giver. And Dunphy um, is receiving those chairs. So that furniture, so debit Dunphy and Sons. Sending an invoice to Miller is telling us that we've sold goods on credit. The source document for a credit sale is the sales day book. Miller Limited is receiving the goods, so we'll debit them because they're receiving, and we will credit our sales account, as we did with our two sales in 7 and 8. And the reason maybe we've sent a credit note to Miller is because Miller has returned goods, so the sales returns book is used. And instead of giving Miller uh, their money back, Well, instead, we'll send them a credit note to reduce the amount they owe us. So in this case here, we'll credit Miller because they have sent goods back to us. Credit them because they're giving and debit or sales returns account. I'm not sure if I said that earlier at the start of the transaction, so I'll just repeat it. We've sent a credit note to Miller because they sent goods back to us. So we credit the giver, Credit Miller Limited. And of course that's what the purpose of a credit note is. When you send a credit note to someone you're telling them that you're going to credit their account. And we'll debit our sales returns. Now sold goods for cash that the owner kept. Well, we'll shorten that. And we'll show that, um, we'll use the general journal to describe the transaction. The owner has ended up receiving money, so debit the owner, the drawings account, and credit or sales account, because basically the transaction was a sale. It's made up of two parts, of course, if you think about it. There's a cash sale, so we would debit the cash account and credit the sales. And then the owner took the money, so we would debit the owner, the drawings account, and credit the cash. So what I've done there is I've left out the debit and the credit entry in the cash account, and I've shortened it, which is quite acceptable. 
and use the general journal to show it. The owner has received, so debit the drawings account because the owner is receiving, and credit the sales account because that is the basic transaction. We gave an office computer as part payment of wages. It's the general journal because it's not sales or sales returns, it's not purchases or purchase returns, it's not cash or petty cash, so it's the general journal. And essentially we're paying uh, wages, so the wages, if you like, is receiving whatever it is we're giving. Uh, we're giving office computers, so we'll put in computers here. We gave somebody a computer, credit the computers account, and debit the wages account. The owner made a contribution to the business here in number 14. General journal can't be the cash book because it's not the business is paying the money, it's the owner. So we use the general journal. The owner is making the contribution. The owner is giving, so credit the capital account. And then debit light and heat. Or electricity, if you like. Debit the light and heat account. Like we did with the wages in 13. Wrote off as a bad debt, a debt due by O'Connell Limited. Again, the general journal. O'Connell owes us money. So they're a debtor, so they have a debit balance. And to get rid of that, we've got to credit O'Connell. And we debit our bad debts account. Will you notice there that in... Um, 13, 14 and 15 we've debited wages, we've debited light and heat and we've debited bad debts. We're going to do it again in 16 for depreciation. We always debit expenses. Okay, down to 16. 15 was writing off a bad debt. Now 16 is writing off depreciation. So we'll use the general journal again because none of the other books of first entry is appropriate. So we're reducing the value of our machinery. So we can... For the moment, anyway, credit machinery account. And we debit our expense account. The depreciation. So just like... Um, just like the previous uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 entries, or 3 entries, we've got 4 expenses in a row there, all with the expense being debited and the other account being credited. When we gave a computer, we credited computers. When the owner paid a bill, we credited capital. When we wrote off the bad debts to O'Connell, we credited O'Connell. And when we reduced the value of the machinery, we credited the machinery. Almost there. 17, again, General Journal. It's a typical uh, stock drawings. The owner is again receiving. So just like up there, with getting some money down here in 17, the owner is receiving. Debit the owner's drawings account. Now, if the stock account doesn't come into this, you'll get used to it. When the owner takes stock for his or her own use, you take the purchases out of the purchases account because they're not going to be resold. So in char instead of transferring the purchases to the trading account, you transfer or charge the purchases to the owner. So I'm going to credit the purchases account. You'll get used to that. The double entry for... Stock drawings is debit the owner's drawings account and credit the business's purchases account. Hopefully you'll find 18 easy peasy. We're paying money, so credit of the book of first entry is the cash book. Um, the money's leaving our bank account, so credit our bank account because it's giving. And as always, debit the expense account. 19. Withdrew cash from the bank for the till, so we don't have enough money in our till so we went over to the bank and took out some we're receiving or paying money so use the cash book as your book of first entry it's the cash account is receiving the money and it's coming from the bank the bank is giving the money and the cash account is receiving it so we're debiting the cash account and we're crediting the bank account it would be the other way around if we were lodging money in the bank if we had too much money in the till and we took money out and made a, made a lodgement to the bank account, we would credit the cash and debit the bank. And our last transaction then is the owner took cash from the bank, but this time it is for the owner themselves. So it's still the cash book, 
and it's still the bank account that's being credited because our bank account is giving credit the giver but no it's the owner receiving the owner received three times in this question took money from a cash sale up there in 12 took stock for his or her own use in 17 and has taken some money out of the bank here in 20 the owner has received so debit the owner's drawings account remember that's the entity concept in accounting whereby when you're doing the accounts it's the accounts of the business you're doing and we treat the owner as a separate entity okay so that's it i hope you did well in that particular question and remember it's all practice